You know who Michael Moore is, don't you, Betty? The film director, he's filming me right now. How did this collapse happen? I got home on a Friday. Everything was just fine. I called back after my plane landed in Indiana, and all of a sudden we've got this crisis on our hands. Yes, it's that tireless scourge of modern America, Michael Moore. The man who made doorstepping into a day job. He must have been evicted by more security guards than anyone else on the screen. He's chronicled the underbelly of the USA for two decades, and Moore World is rarely a pleasant place to be. In Roger and Me, he examined the fate of workers let go by General Motors as industrial America went through its painful downsizing. Bowling for Columbine dissected America's faith in the gun, despite the horrors of teenage killing sprees, and Fahrenheit 9-11 took a scathing glance at the US in the war on terror. What's left, you might be wondering, for Moore to get his sardonic teeth into? Well, this time the baseball capped Avengers gone for an all-out assault on capitalism itself. Kicking capitalism when it's down is pure pleasure to Moore, and the recession gives him plenty of material. Even more surprisingly, Moore reveals he's a practicing Roman Catholic who considers the unfettered free market to be at odds with Christian religion. Along the way, he jabs a finger at Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Goldman Sachs, and fans indignation at the behavior of banks and companies towards the rest of us. But is it a rant or a righteous jacuzzi? I'm joined by Oliver Cam of The Times and the Reverend Robert Sirico, president of the Acton Institute think tank. He's in St. Paul, Minnesota. Father Sirico, Looking at this as a film, what part of the American psyche do you think it's tapping into? Well, I suppose it's the slapstick side. Uh, you know, the, the whole image of Moore standing in front of, uh, was it Bank of America or Citibank with a bag of money demanding the uh, bailout money back? Uh, I, I don't think that most Americans, uh, and uh, judging by the... Uh, poor way in which the market uh, judged the film uh, would find the film very interesting. Well, that, I suppose that there is a sense of public feeling of anger and in, uh, not knowing how to make that anger sort of real. And, and one thing about Michael Moore is he certainly doesn't keep his anger under a bushel. He takes it out and he knocks on the door of yeah. the CEOs, doesn't he? But he doesn't do it as humorously as he used to do it. He He's attempting here to be a Boric kind of figure, but he's not as funny as Boric, and he's not as effective. You uh, mean Borat, the... Um, Borat, the... Uh, yes, yes. The, 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 the comic character, right. yeah. And then uh, the other director that comes to mind is uh, Reinfenstahl, Lenny Reinfenstahl, who did uh, Triumph of the Will, the Hitler's propagandist. So he tries to combine these two things, the propaganda and the humor. And I just think it fell flat, aside from the um, ideological, philosophical, economic disagreements I'd have with Moore. Well, let, let's come to those in a minute, but let me bring in Oliver Cam. I mean, he does pick up on some pretty dreadful practices here, doesn't he, Oliver? I mean, the dead peasant insurance scam, when a company insures someone without their knowledge, and so cashes in when they die. I mean, these are pretty sort of dark sides of capitalism. We might not always think about them. I entirely agree. There's a great deal that you can attack and satirize effectively about a dysfunctional financial system that is parasitic on the real economy. The problem with Michael Moore is, well, someone said after he won his Pandora for Fahrenheit 9-11, it's Noam Chomsky for dummies. Well, this film is, is Michael Moore for those who find the earlier films too learned and elusive. It's scattergun, it's far too long, it doesn't direct its anger properly, and the doorstepping that you refer to, it's never against the real corporate villains. It's always against security guards and secretaries. Well, he can't get to the it's real corporate precisely. villains, can he? Because so they've he got their security up, guards and funds. He gangs up on the little people. It's a, it's a pitiful tactic. I wonder, though, whether either of you felt that there was a sort of anger that is being channeled here. And he is very daring, isn't he, Father Sirico, in his comparisons. At one point, he compares the falling Roman Empire to the travails of, of the USA. I mean, there is this very self-confident, irrepressible streak in Michael Moore, whatever you think of his analysis. Well, that's what one can do when one disregards facts and uh, totally overlooks nuance. Uh, the attacks allegedly on capitalism are really on corporate capitalism capitalism on uh, uh, the systems that uh, seek government subsidies. Uh, if you're going to complain about lobbyists, you have to recognize the fact that uh, the increase in lobbyists is in direct proportion to the increase in government regulation that he's calling for. And then, of course, the solemn irony of the whole movie is that this is a profit-making endeavor. There's a whole marketing scheme. It was very difficult to get a hold of this film and, uh, you know, honor the property rights that Michael Moore has to it. You could download it illegally, 
Bradley, which I did not do. I got it from his publicist. Certainly wouldn't recommend, would we? No, 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 not at all, because it would be a violation of Michael Moore's property rights. Now, there's an irony. <gasps> Oliver, let's look in a bit of detail at the critique of capitalism that underlines this film. What is he really saying about capitalism? He's not so much saying anything about capitalism as demonising a particular word. It's a thorough mess as a, as a piece of analysis. Uh, there are parts of it that are not just incoherent, but are positively sinister. His phrase, a financial coup d'etat, to describe the bank bailout. There's a great deal of justified public hostility to uh, banking practices, predatory lending, and... Uh, a wholesale taking on of risk, which the banks didn't understand that undermined the economy, that he might have attacked. And instead, he throws it all in and comes up with the most simplistic analysis. But I mean, it's pretty easy to pick holes in a Michael Moore film. I think a lot of people can do that. But surely, aren't you missing that, that people do feel angry and they're very pleased to see someone take up cudgels? Now, those cudgels might not always hit the right targets and you can pick or choose and you don't like the phrase financial coup d'etat. But frankly, a lot of people thought the bailout of the banks was a financial coup d'etat. Sorry, do come in, Pazuka. <laughs> I, I, I exactly was against it from the beginning, but the whole point, and I think uh, my colleague here has made it very well, this was not directed at capitalism. It didn't define it, and then the whole religious uh, argument was um, manipulative uh, as well. I, I can say some things about that if, you, if you'd like. I mean, well, the, the, exactly. I was going to come to you on that. So let's okay. do that. Your think tank looks at morality of the markets and religion yes. and the interplay or not between the two. Now, the most surprising thing about this uh, film for many people will be Moore's assertion that as a Catholic, he finds capitalism to be evil and anti-religious. Who would have thought that Michael Moore was a Catholic? Uh, and the four religious figures that he introduces in the film are allegedly Catholic priests, and they are not. Well, there are two of them are. One of them is not listed as a Catholic priest, and the third one, the bishop who is celebrating Mass, is not a Roman Catholic, though he's presented as though he is. These are not representative positions of the Catholic Church, and they emphatically say that they are. And, uh, they're just but it an is a, p a polemic, isn't it? And there have been arguments since time immemorial uh, in the European Catholic mainstream, for instance, about what the correct constraints on capitalism are. That's there. It's if it's there in papal thinking. Th that is a different question than saying that it is an intrinsic evil that it needs to be eliminated. That. Uh, uh, that it is uh, damnable, as as his religious figures say. That's what I began with. There's no nuance in this. The Catholic Catechism, on the other hand, draws a distinction between a good capitalism and a bad capitalism, mm -hmm. one that has a moral, moral and ethical center with a, a private economy, with property rights, and the other that is uh, completely um, uh, free of any moral restraint.